Hello one and all, welcome back to the Geek Talk. Today, we will continue our examination of how long Avatar The Last Airbender actually was. On the last video, we looked at book one. If you missed it, I'm sure there's something floating above my head or you can check the description box below. Or if you watch a lot of my videos, it's probably already recommended to you somewhere in the sidebar, but it's somewhere for you to watch it if you need to watch it. And if you already did watch the previous video, then let's continue with this one. Like with the last video, if you want to know the answer without any explanation, you can skip to the time code here and just get the answer. But before we start, we have to address some timeline discrepancies. As you may know, we deduced that book one took place over 60 days. But one of my commenters, Felix W, made a note that I missed a day because Team Avatar spent a night in Omashu, which I didn't account for. So we really should be at 61 days. However, I accidentally added a day uh, when they went to the Northern Water Tribe. I think I said day 51 and then I said night 52, but really it should be night 51 because it's the same day night cycle. So I shouldn't have pushed it up. So even though the final count of 60 days was right, it was wrong. And I think that gets all the introductions out of the way. Uh, yes. Oh, obvious spoiler warning for those of you who have not watched Avatar The Last Airbender book two. Book two. The Avatar State. Night 60. January 26th. Aang has a terrible dream, frightened by the sheer power of the Avatar State, which he still cannot control. Katara tries to console him once more. Day 61. January 27th. Paku gives Katara some spirit water. And that's what I call high quality a tool. Keep that in mind for later. It'll become quite relevant. Meanwhile, Iroh gets some overdue R&R, &R, saying, Who knew floating on a piece of driftwood for three weeks with no food or water? And sea vultures waiting to pluck out your liver could make one so tense. Three weeks? Whoops, we are not on day 61 anymore. We're now on day 82, February 17th. Iroh gets some overdue R&R, &R, while Zuko broods, saying, Three years ago today, I was banished. Cool. So that means Zuko was banished in 97 AG, Year of the Snake. Meanwhile, Azula gets her official introduction, and she's sort of a savage. And if I were to have you thrown overboard, would the tides think twice about smashing you against the rocky shore? The gang arrive at Fong's base after their own three-week journey. And yes, this is completely inconsistent with our previous measurements. At most, travel from the Northern Water Tribe and Fong's base should be no longer than nine days. But considering that the gang parted ways with Paku on his ship, it's possible that they split off somewhere near the Western Air Temple and then continued their travels from there, which would add more time. Or for safer travel, the split off could have happened somewhere near the Northeast coast. We can't really tell because the scene is just a stretch of water. In any case, Fong tells Aang he's ready to face the Fire Lord now. Aang disagrees. He has no control over the Avatar state and can't activate it unless he's angry or in danger. Fong offers to help Aang enter the Avatar state, disregarding the fact that the airbender needs to master two more elements. Elsewhere, Azula trains with lightning bending. Night 82, February 17th. Aang agrees to fight the Fire Lord under General Fong's tutelage. Day 83, February 18th. Fong's tea brewer gives Aang a mystical concoction that is said to improve strength and energy tenfold. It does not work. The tea is no better than a cup of coffee or a can of energy drink. Is it working? Is it working? I can't tell! Somebody tell me if I'm in the Avatar state because I don't have a good view of myself. Am I talking too loud? Sokka tries to scare Aang into the Avatar state. It does not work. Fong's shaman tries a ritual to call forth the Avatar state. Again, it does not work. Meanwhile, Zuko and Iroh's spa day comes to an end when Azula shows up. She says their father wants Zuko back, that the Fire Lord regrets banishing his son. Don't believe her, Zuko. Night 83, February 18th. Iroh is a bit suspicious about Azula and the Fire Lord's proposition. Zuko is too elated to care. After a bad dream, Aang decides calling the Avatar state is too dangerous. Day 84, February 19th. Aang tells Fong that he can't help him, at least not yet. Fong doesn't like that, 
doing his best to force the Avatar state out of Aang. Eventually, he achieves what he wants when he sinks Katara into the ground, making Aang think she will suffocate. It works. Aang enters the Avatar state, but he cannot control it. Meanwhile, one of the Fire Nation soldiers lets it slip that Zuko and Iroh are being taken as prisoners, not as guests. Zuko and Azula fight. Zuko's on the losing end when he's about to be shot with lightning, but Iroh saves him. The uncle and nephew make their escape, cutting their hair knots to disguise themselves from Fire Nation and Earth Kingdom alike. Before Aang completely destroys Fong's base, Avatar Roku intercedes. If he's killed while in the state, the Avatar will cease to exist entirely. Ooh, narrative stakes. When Aang is returned to his body, Sokka knocks Fong out, to the approval of Fong's soldiers, and the gang fly away toward Omashu. Book 2. The Cave of Two Lovers We would say it takes three days with rest to get from Fong's base to the lover's cave. However, Zuko's hair growth suggests a different story. In the previous episode, we saw that he was bald save for the patch at the top of his head, but now he has a shortcut, which would take at least a week to grow out. So that means we have some timeline discrepancies. But the way we'll be working with this disconnect between the Zuko and Aang timeline, which don't really align until the next episode that they meet each other again in the chase, is by defaulting to Aang's timeline. In the back of our heads, we just have to keep in mind that Zuko's timeline might be slightly ahead of Aang's. But for simplicity's sake, in the bottom right corner, we'll keep the timeline based on whatever Aang's journey is telling us at that time. Or, I mean, we can just say that um, Zuko's hair grows really, really fast and that the discrepancy is in the timeline, but in his hair growth. And also, you know, this isn't the real world. So and Zuko maybe can, or people in this world can grow hair very quickly. Um, but this will become an issue a little bit later when we get into book three with Aang's hair growth. So we'll see if that has some continuity to it or not. All said, that puts us at day 87, February 22nd. From the start, Sokka says, We've got a lot of ground to cover if we want to make it to Omashu today. Meaning that the gang is less than a day from King Bumi's city. Meanwhile, Zuko and Iroh find out it's hard to forage for food. Iroh debates if he should make tea from the rare white dragon bush. Not one of his wisest decisions. While training, a band of Earth Kingdom nomad hippies find the gang. The nomads tell stories of a pass through the mountains, a shortcut to Omashu to avoid the eyes of the Fire Nation. Gangs say thanks, but decide to fly. Launch! Secret love cave, let's go. Iroh has a bad reaction from the dragon bush, so he and Zuko need to find help from a nearby Earth Kingdom village. They meet with a friendly healer named Song, who brings Iroh back to proper health. The gang takes the mountain path, but the Fire Nation cave them in. There's only one way out, but the cave is not a straight shot. It's a labyrinth. Night 87, February 22nd. Song brings Zuko and Iroh back to her home, where Zuko learns a bit more of the horrors of war from the other side. The gang gets split up in the cave. Sokka is annoyed with the hippies, while Aang and Katara get a little closer. Despite Zuko's brief empathy, he steals an ostrich horse from Song's family. Day 88, February 23rd. With the help of some badger moles and some lights of love, the gang makes it out of the cave of two lovers. But when they finally arrive at Omashu, it has been officially colonized by the Fire Nation. Book 2, Return to Omashu. Katara and Sokka think it's time to move on and find another earthbending master, but Aang wants to save King Bumi. Night 88, February 23rd. After infiltrating Omashu through the sewer system, the gang talks their way out of a guard unit by saying Sokka has Entapox. Meanwhile, Azula says, I need a small elite team, when referring to her pursuit of Zuko and Iroh. Back at Omashu, we meet Mei, the Fire Nation governor's daughter, who is bored with their position at the city. Eventually, she encounters Aang, but the Avatar gang gets away. Day 89, February 24th. Azula tries to recruit Tai Lee, but is denied. The gang meets the Omashu resistance, where they find out that King Bumi did nothing to stop the invasion. The leader wants to fight, but Aang says it's better to fight another day. 
<laughs> so Sokka devises a plan to make the citizens all seem like they have pentapox, so that they can all leave the city safely. Elsewhere, Momo is responsible for inadvertently kidnapping the governor's baby, Tom Tom. Night 89, February 24th. Azula makes Tai Lee's circus performance a living hell, forcing the acrobat to join Azula's team. After discovering their son is missing, the governor and his wife want to make a trade with the Omashu resistance. Tom Tom for King Bumi. Day 90, February 25th. Azula arrives in Omashu where she recruits Mei along with Tai Lee just in time for the Tom Tom King Bumi trade. Team Avatar meets Team Azula, where Azula says the trade isn't fair. An action scene breaks out as Azula chases Aang while Mei and Tai Lee fight Katara and Sokka, eventually culminating in the gang's escape as King Bumi says it's not the right time for them to save him. Instead, he tells Aang to find a master who knows how to wait and listen. Azula proclaims her team has a new target now. The Avatar. Night 90. February 25th. Aang decides to return Tom Tom to his family. No trade necessary. Book 2. The Swamp Appa, yip, yip. Travel from Omashu to the Swamp can't be more than a day, putting us at Day 91, February 26th. Zuko and Iroh beg for coins as they continue to struggle on the road, while Aang is drawn to a mysterious swamp. When the rest of the gang says they rather pass over the swamp, the swamp has a different idea. Separated, the gang tries to find Appa and Momo. Night 91, February 26th. The search continues through the night as a mysterious vine creature attacks the gang, separating Team Avatar even further. Day 92, February 27th. A pair of hungry swamp dwellers, Tho and Du, start a hunt for Appa, as each member of Team Avatar have some bad trips due to the mystical swamp gas. Eventually, the group finds each other again just as they are attacked by the swamp monster once more. Fighting and action ensue, and the swamp monster turns out to be a waterbender specializing in plant bending named Hugh, but Appa and Momo are still lost. Aang uses the root of the swamp's great tree to locate his lost friends, and before the other swamp dwellers start to cook Appa, Aang and Katara save the day. Night 92, February 27th. After everything is cleared up, the gang have a feast of bugs with the swamp dwellers. Elsewhere, Zuko finds a new pair of broadswords. Book 2 Avatar Day Appa, yip, yip. Travel time between the swamp and the Chin village can't take more than a day, putting us at Day 93, February 28th. After waking, the gang is attacked by a band of mercenaries. They escape, but Sokka loses his boomerang. While replenishing their supplies, a merchant tells them about the Avatar Day festival starting at Chin Village. The group travels to the village, but find out the Avatar Day isn't a celebration of the Avatar, but a defamation. Meanwhile, Zuko takes up thievery because he totally sucks at foraging and fending for himself in the wild. Aang tries to convince the village that the Avatar is good, not bad, so he agrees to stand trial. Sokka and Katara do some investigating, which leads them back to Kyoshi Island. Eventually, they uncover that Avatar Kyoshi did not kill Chin the Conqueror. Intentionally, anyway. Despite the evidence Sokka and Katara have mustered, they get a rude awakening about the village's justice system. That's why we call it justice. Because it's just us. Day 94, March 1st. Aang's trial commences as Iroh confronts Zuko about his thievery. Zuko doesn't want to hear his uncle and decides to part ways with Iroh to find his own way. At Chin Village, just before Aang is about to cook in hot oil, the rough rhino mercenaries return and attack. The villagers forgive Aang and demand he thwarts the interlopers. After a short action sequence where Team Avatar comes out on top, the villagers finally celebrate Aang properly. Book 2 The Blind Bandit. Appa, yip, yip. Travel time between Chin Village and Gaoling shouldn't take more than a day with rest, putting us at Day 95, March 2nd. While at market, the gang are enticed by a man recruiting individuals for Master Yu's Earthbending Academy. Aang still needs a master, so it doesn't seem like a bad idea. Unfortunately, Master Yu's Academy is no better than a McDojo. However, the other students in the Academy mention Earth Rumble 6. Maybe Aang can find a master there. Night 95, March 2nd. And then, Toph happens. 
After watching the blind bandit fight, Aang knows she's the one for him. But after beating her in a match, Toph is less than willing to teach him. Day 96, March 3rd. After poking around and asking a few questions, Aang finds out that Toph belongs to one of the richest families in Gaoling. He and the gang sneak into her estate to ask her again, but Toph denies them a second time. Night 96, March 3rd. The group returns at night, using Aang's status as Avatar to acquire an audience with the Beifong family. As Aang and Toph get to know each other better, they are ambushed and captured by the wrestlers who feel like they were cheated in Earthrumble 6. The wrestlers hold Toph at ransom, freeing her only after the Beifongs pay up. However, they won't give up Aang, who will earn a heftier price within the Fire Nation. Toph takes on the wrestlers single-handedly and makes them look like earthbending novices. She's the greatest earthbender I've ever seen. But despite her skill, her parents think her too fragile and meek to train the Avatar, let alone travel with them. So Toph decides to run away with Team Avatar. Mr. Beifong takes issue, thinking the gang has kidnapped his daughter. So he lets Toph's instructor and the leader of Earthrumble take on the task of returning his daughter. Book 2, Zuko Alone. Appa, yip, yip. We'll base the timeline for this story on future episodes, as Zuko will eventually encounter the gang in The Chase, which takes place in the Ghost Town. The travel point between Gaoling and said Ghost Town should be around two days with rest. Therefore, we believe Zuko's solo episode overlaps with the Blind Bandit, starting on Day 95, March 2nd. Zuko continues to struggle with the plains of the Earth Kingdom as he travels alone. Eventually, he finds a small town where he runs into a friendly farmer boy named Lee. Lee introduces Zuko to his family, where Zuko agrees to trade work for food and shelter. Night 95, March 2nd. Zuko finds Lee practicing with his broadswords. The farmer boy is terrible, but Zuko gives him a brief lesson in dual blade swordsmanship. Day 96, March 3rd. A group of rogue Earth Kingdom soldiers informs Lee's father that the Fire Nation captured his son. But the soldiers insult him and seem to want to start a fight, which Zuko breaks up. After gifting Lee a dagger, Zuko leaves. Moments later, Zela, Lee's mother, says the rogue soldiers took her son away. They told me if he's old enough to fight, he's old enough to join the army. So Zuko goes to get him back. After a short fight with the soldiers, which forces Zuko to reveal his firebending powers, the Fire Nation Prince saves Lee but is banished by the town who do not trust the Fire Nation on principle alone. Book 2, The Chase Appa, yip, yip. As said before, the travel time between Gaoling and Ghost Town should be two days with rest, putting us at Day 98, March 6th. The gang mess around with Appa's shedding hair. Katara is tired of the boy's immaturity and is glad to have Toph around, but the blind bandit is no better. Ah... Uh. The beauty of spring. Night 98, March 6th. After a long day of traveling, the gang sets down in a clearing for the night. But once they sleep, Toph senses something approaching, a Fire Nation tank bearing down on them. So the gang hop back on Appa and fly away. This sequence of setting up camp and flying away goes on for a while until the gang finally decide to face their pursuers head on. Little do they know, it's Azula giving chase. Toph says they can take them, but when Azula blasts a hole through her rock wall, the gang is forced to retreat. The gang continues their escape on Appa with absolutely no sleep, leading us to Day 99, March 7th. Following Azula's tracks, Zuko joins in for the hunt against the Avatar. Too tired to go on, Appa falls asleep mid-air. After crashing into a forest, the gang decides to go to sleep. There should be enough distance between them and Azula's group, right? Sleep-deprived, Katara and Toph argue about Toph's issues. What? Aang tries to play mediator, but when Toph blames Appa's shedding as the reason for them being tracked, it's the last straw. Fed up with each other, Toph leaves the group on her own. With Toph gone, the rest of the gang use Appa's shedding to their advantage, using it as bait. Aang takes some hair and leads a trail to a ghost town, while the Water Tribe siblings continue through the forest to find Toph. Mei and Tai Li catch up, but Katara and Sokka are able to escape, while in the ghost town, Aang faces off against Azula and a newcomer, Zuko. Meanwhile, Toph stumbles upon Iroh, who gives her words of wisdom, as he tends to do. 
Back in town, a three-way fight breaks out between Aang, Azula, and Zuko, eventually turning into six versus one when the rest of the gang, plus Iroh, shows up. After Azula catches Iroh slipping, striking him with a whip of fire, she escapes in a huge energy ball. Team Avatar offer their help to Iroh, but Zuko denies them in anger, forcing them to retreat into Night 99, March 7th. Finally, the gang gets the rest they sorely need. Book 2. Bitter Work For the first time, S. N. Henry's map doesn't show us where exactly Team Avatar travels to, but we do know it's somewhere between the Ghost Town and the Misty Palms Oasis. Therefore, it shouldn't take more than a night to travel from the Ghost Town, where the gang got some much needed sleep, to the Rock Quarry where Toph begins training Aang, putting us at Day 100, March 8th. The structure of this episode is quite simple. As Toph tries to teach Aang how to earthbend, Iroh teaches Zuko how to redirect lightning, which takes place over the course of a single day. And now we enter the great comic book detour. Lost Adventures. Sleep Bending. Though not directly specified in the comic, we place the events of Sleep Bending somewhere after Aang's training with Toph after the episode Bitter Work, as he is seen earthbending in his sleep, something that he shouldn't be doing prior to said episode. And all subsequent comics in the Lost Adventures collection have to happen before the library when Appa is taken by Sandbenders. So sit back and relax, we'll be in comic book land for the next few minutes. For sleep bending, which could take place as early as day 101, March 9th, the entire story takes place over a few minutes as the gang tries to wake Aang from a nightmare early in the morning. Lost Adventures Lessons Though speculative, we would say this story happens right after Aang's sleep bending episode, meaning we remain on day 101, March 9th. Toph gives Aang a lesson in listening, which means Sokka needs to go away and keep himself busy. But of course, that doesn't last long. Sokka ends up having a fight with Momo over an exotic fruit, which Appa gets involved with, stomping and marching loudly all the while. Fed up, Toph forces Sokka to stay on a rock-bent cliff until night 101, March 9th. Sokka asks to come down, but Toph says his lesson isn't over with yet. Lost Adventures, Sokka, the Avatar. Again, speculative, but we would say this comic starts at least a couple of days later, putting us at Day 103, March 11th. The events of the comic take place over the course of a single day. Team Avatar visits yet another town where Sokka pretends to be the Avatar to impress a cute girl. When Aang helps him pretend he can airbend, the cute girl becomes Sokka's girlfriend. But his acting eventually gets them in trouble when the rough rhinos show up. But the gang save the day once again. The only question the comic doesn't answer is, did Sokka ever break up with that cute girl before he reacquainted with Suki later? The Lost Adventures. Dirt is only skin deep. Following with our previous structure, we'll say this next comic happens the next day on Day 104, March 12th. While bathing, Aang, Sokka, and Katara complain about Toph's stench, which she calls a protective layer of earth. In truth, Toph doesn't like washing because she doesn't like going into the water. In fact, chronologically, this is the first time we as the audience find out that Toph can't swim. This, of course, will come up again in the episode titled The Serpent's Pass. Lost Adventures. Divided We Fall. We're starting to sound like a broken record here, but we'll say this takes place on the next day, putting us at Day 105, March 13th. On their way to Hiroku Canyon, the gang is caught in a fierce storm. They fly straight into a hurricane, flung off from Appa's back, where they are split up in a forest. After a few misadventures, the gang reunite at Grandma Lokai's Earth Orphanage, where they are treated to some slimy worm soup. Lost Adventures Reach for the Toph Day 106, March 14th Toph continues to train Aang, but clenches him in a rock fist. Katara takes issue with Toph's methods and tries to splash the Earthbender, but she fails. Sokka comes in with his boomerang, but trips and fails. Toph comes out on top. Whew. That ends the great comic book detour for now. Back to the show. Book 2, The Library. After our collection of comic book detours, we arrive just outside the Misty Palms Oasis, putting us at Day 107, March 15th. 
funny enough, Sokka complains about the group's vacations and wants to get serious. Even if Aang masters all the elements, they don't have a plan of attack against the Fire Nation when the airbender is ready. After arriving in the Misty Palms, the gang meets an anthropologist from Ba Sing Se University named Professor Zay, who's in search of Wan Shi Tong's lost library. In the next episode, one of the villagers at the Misty Oasis says, Yeah, a little barefoot blind girl and her friends passed through here a few days ago. Meaning, it took the group at least three days to find the library, putting us at or around day 110, March 18th. With the help of a certain flying bison and the research of Professor Zay, the gang finds the library in the middle of Ziwang Desert. Team Avatar, minus Toph, go down into the sunken library where they eventually find information on the Fire Nation. We'll have to keep this in mind for our examination of Book 3's timeline, as Sokka finds out that the Day of Black Sun is on the first day of the eighth month of the Superior Military Monkey Year, according to these Chinese characters, which, when translated to the Gregorian calendar format, would be August 1st, 100 AG. After Wan Shi Tong realizes that Sokka used the library for a human war, the Owl Spirit chases the gang out of the library, collapsing the large building deeper into the desert. Meanwhile, Toph does her best to keep the library up so that the rest of the group can escape, but while she's preoccupied, a group of sandbenders kidnaps Appa. Toph can't save her friends and Appa at the same time, so she makes a tough decision and focuses her attention on the library while Appa is taken away. Book 2. The Desert. Day 110, March 18th. Angry and frustrated, Aang goes after Appa, but it's an impossible task. The desert is too expansive. Meanwhile, Zuko and Iroh continue their travels where they cross paths with the rough rhinos. The bounty hunters are in search of fugitives and attack the pair. An action scene breaks out, which ends with Zuko and Iroh's escape. The fugitives find themselves in the Misty Palms, where Toph's former instructor and the Earth Rumble leader are in search of a fugitive of their own. Night 110, March 18th. Exhausted and delirious, the gang looks for shelter. Back at the Misty Palms, Iroh makes contact with the White Lotus. After a nap, Katara finds an abandoned and broken sandbender transport, a sand sailor. Later, we find out how this got here in the Appa's Lost Days episode. Luckily for the group, the sailor has a compass, which leads them to day 111, March 19th. The desert center happens to be a buzzard wasp cave. Not the best place for shelter. After Team Avatar fights off the buzzard wasps they disturbed, the sandbenders find them. Meanwhile, after speaking to the White Lotus, Iroh finds a ride to Ba Sing Se, where he and Zuko can hide among the crowded urban environment. Back in the desert, Toph recognizes one of the Sandbender's voices as one of Appa's kidnappers. Aang gets pissed and drops into the Avatar state. Fearing for his life, the Sandbender admits that Appa was sold to a traitor in Ba Sing Se. Aang is about to go ape sh but once more, Katara quells his outrage with her compassion. Book 2. Serpent's Pass. Appa, yip yip! Ooh, was that clip too soon? Maybe we should have used something else to signify travel time. Well, anyway, now that the gang is without Appa, their travel would take significantly longer as they go from the Ziwang Desert to Full Moon Bay. With Appa, the trek would take three days with rest, considering they probably used a sand sailor to get out of the desert, which is probably slightly slower than Appa, we'll say it takes them an additional day to get out. Putting us at Day 115, March 23rd. After consulting his stolen map, Sokka suggests the gang go over the Serpent's Pass to reach Ba Sing Se, but when another group of refugees finds them, they say that's a terrible idea. It's one of the most dangerous paths in the whole of the Earth Kingdom. The refugees suggest they go through Full Moon Bay instead. As the gang arrive, Iroh and Zuko leave on their own ferry to Ba Sing Se. The Fire Nation fugitives meet up with Jet and his band of reformed renegades who are also headed to Ba Sing Se. While Team Avatar awaits their ferry, they run into Suki who is protecting the refugees. Unfortunately, the friendly refugees from before get their tickets and passports stolen. Now they and the gang have no choice but to go over the Serpent's Pass. Night 115, March 23rd. After a day of travel across the pass, the gang settles down for the night while Zuko and Jet steal some food from the greedy ferry captain. Day 116, March 24th. After a good night's rest, the gang finds that the middle of the rocky pass is covered by a hundred yards of water. 
So Katara and Aang do their best version of the parting of the Red Sea until they come across the Serpent of the Serpent's Pass. After an action sequence which nearly sees Toph drown, Team Avatar gets across, but the pregnant refugee goes into labor. Katara goes into midwife mode and delivers the baby. The sight of the new child lifts Aang's downer spirit in light of Appa's capture. Aang goes looking for Appa at Ba Sing Se, but discovers that the Fire Nation is sending a huge drill toward the outer wall of the Grand City. Book 2. The Drill This one is an easy one to cover. The entire episode takes place over a single day, so we continue from Day 116, March 24th. The conflict is simple. Stop the Fire Nation from drilling a cavity into Ba Sing Se's outer wall. Putting their minds and power together, the gang faces against Azula and her drill, eventually destroying it and sending the Fire Nation packing. Elsewhere, as Zuko and Iroh enter Ba Sing Se, Jet starts to suspect they're firebenders after he sees Iroh heat his tea with his hands. Book 2 City of Walls and Secrets Day 117, March 25th no travel time with this episode, as Team Avatar settles into the city of Ba Sing Se in search of Appa. But first, Sokka has an important message to tell the Earth King. Meanwhile, Zuko and Iroh do some settling in of their own as they pick up new jobs at a tea house. But, unbeknownst to them, Jet watches their every move. When the gang finally get to the upper ring to see the Earth King, they get some shocking news. It'll take a month to have an audience with his majesty. Six to eight weeks, actually. <laughs> Since Team Avatar has a whole month, six to eight weeks, actually, they continue their search for Appa, but none of the citizens want to give them the information they need when their host, Judy, tells them not to. Night 117, March 25th. Jet continues spying on Zuko and Iroh, waiting for them to reveal themselves as firebenders. Day 118, March 26th. In the morning, Katara cooks up a plan to crash a party hosted by the Earth King in the palace. Night 118, March 26th. Dolled up and ready, Toph and Katara crash the palace party. Fed up with waiting, Jet forces Zuko to reveal himself by challenging him to a duel, but his plan is a bit half-baked. After a short duel with the former Blue Spirit, Jet is arrested and taken away by the Dai Li. Back at the palace, the gang almost get their audience with the king, but are blocked by the leader of the Dai Li, Long Fang who explains that no one in Ba Sing Se can know about the war, including the king. And while Team Avatar gets this explanation, Jet is brainwashed by Dai Li Hypnosis. Book 2. Tales of Ba Sing Se So this episode is interesting because it's a bit of an anthology framed around the month the gang has to wait until they can see the king. In terms of timeline, there isn't much to see here, as we already know how long the period is, but the Avatar Wiki sums up this episode best as a set of vignettes about each of the main characters' adventures in Ba Sing Se, providing a glimpse of their personalities and private lives. Katara and Toph have a girl's day out. Iroh helps people in town before celebrating the birthday of his dead son. Aang helps a zookeeper build a new zoo. Sokka accidentally ends up in a poetry club. Zuko goes out on a date, and Momo searches Ba Sing Se for Appa. Book 2. Appa's Lost Days So let's backtrack, shall we? Day 110, March 18th. Appa is taken by the Sandbenders, eventually being sold off to desert merchants. Day 111, March 19th. The next day, Appa finds himself in a Fire Nation circus where he is told he'll be broken. Yeesh, calm down there, circus guy. Day 113, March 20th. A few days later, circus guy continues to torment Appa as he prepares the Sky Bison for the night's circus act. The reason we know this is not the next day comes up a bit later. Night 113, March 20th. A young Fire Nation colonist who looks suspiciously like Sokka but sounds like Aang, finds and befriends the caged Appa as the Wind Buffalo is pressured to perform. During his first performance, and with the encouragement of the young colonist, Appa makes his escape back into the desert. Appa, yip yip! It's hard to determine how long it would take Appa to get back to the library, considering we have no knowledge of where the circus was, but for simplicity's sake, we'll say it's day 114, March 21st. Appa struggles as he looks for something to eat and drink in the desert. Day 115, March 22nd. 
Appa struggles some more as he encounters the Buzzard Wasp Hive. Night 115, March 22nd. Finding shelter, Appa gets some much needed rest, and what's really crazy is that he shares a dream with Aang on the very same night the gang spent the night at the Serpent's Pass. Yay for continuity! This is the very reason why we knew Appa spent at least an extra day at the circus, because otherwise, these dates wouldn't quite line up. Unfortunately, Appa can't catch a break when farmers find him sleeping in their barn, scaring him away with fire. On that same night, Appa passes over Zuko and Iroh as they were ferrying toward Ba Sing Se near Full Moon Bay. Just outside Ba Sing Se, Appa is exhausted, collapsing into a forest where, once more, he is troubled by another wild creature. Jesus, Appa can't catch a break. After a short fight, which Appa wins, the Sky Bison earns his bed for the night, getting much needed rest. Day 116, March 23rd. Appa continues to rest. Night 116, March 23rd. And continues to rest. Day 117, March 24th. Nearby, the Kyoshi warriors forage for food, where Suki recognizes Appa's shedded fur. When she finds him, their reunion is cut short when Azula shows up to ruin things. By the way, this works perfectly in the timeline, as Azula and her team were just defeated at the Wall a day prior on Day 116, March 23rd. Night 117, March 24th. Appa escapes, but is caught in a downpour where Hakoda, Katara and Sokka's father, sees him. The next time we see him, he's traveled far, far southeast, a full week's worth, which, according to the map, means we should land on Day 124, March 31st. Appa finds an abandoned eastern air temple looking for the only thing he's familiar with. The Sky Bison bumps into Guru Patik. A bit mistrusting of strangers, Appa does nothing but growl at the thin man until night 124, March 31st. He falls asleep. Day 125, April 1st. When Appa wakes, he follows a trail of fruit to Guru Patik, who awaits him at a sanctuary. Night 125, April 1st. Patik gives Appa a letter for Aang, sending the Sky Bison away back to Ba Sing Se. Night 146, April 28th. The reason for this drastic time jump is based on the timeline presented in City of Walls and Secrets. The distinct timeline between Appa's capture and Momo finding his footprints is four weeks. So, to get everything aligned, that means Appa must have returned to Ba Sing Se on night 146. However, when Appa does return to Ba Sing Se, he's immediately captured by Long Fang of the Dai Li. Book 2. Lake Lao Gai. Day 147, April 29th. Team Avatar draw up lost Appa posters, which they spread around all over Ba Sing Se, one of which lands straight into the hands of Zuko. And what's worse, Ju Di and the Dai Li take issue with Aang's posters. Elsewhere, Zuko is having trouble accepting a new life in Ba Sing Se, as Iroh is offered his own tea shop in the Upper Ring. Zuko doesn't care, however, as he starts to relapse to his book one mentality. While putting up posters, Katara runs into Jet, whom she greets with a fistful of ice, but eventually listens to what he has to say when he offers help with Appa. Jet's help leads Team Avatar to Whaletail Island, but not before Jet's old friends show up to say that the Freedom Fighter had been captured. Eventually, this all leads to the gang discovering that Jet has been brainwashed by the Dai Li. Night 147, April 29th. Back at their hideout, the gang try to jog Jet's memory as best they can, while the Blue Spirit goes back into action. With the help of Katara's healing water powers, they restore Jet's memory, which leads them to Lake Laogai. Day 148, April 30th. The next day, Team Avatar infiltrates Lake Laogai, where they find all kinds of weird sh eventually encountering Long Fang and the Dai Li. Meanwhile, Zuko is about to take Appa when he is confronted by his uncle who is fed up with his nephew's bull. Back to the gang, an action scene starts with the Dai Li, which eventually ends in... Jet's... death? Did Jet just... die? You know, it was really unclear. But when Team Avatar finds Appa's cell, he's gone. There's no time to waste as the gang retreat from Lake Laogai, only to be cornered by the Dai Li again. Lucky for them, Zuko grew a conscience and let the Sky Bison go free so that Appa could save the day. Book 2, The Earth King. We continue this episode on the same day, straight after the gang reunites with Appa. Sokka feels like they're on a roll and believes they should try to speak with the Earth King. 
As the gang approaches the palace, they are attacked by the Earth King's guard. An extended action scene breaks out, which culminates in Team Avatar having their audience with the Earth King. After a long conversation, the Earth King agrees to hear them out. For the rest of the episode, the gang try their best to convince the Earth King the war is real and the Dai Li conspiracy is true, while Zuko sweats out a fever. Eventually, the Earth King sides with Team Avatar and has Long Fang arrested. The Earth King agrees that they should take the offensive on the Day of Black Sun. The rest of the episode sets up events in the next, with each member splitting up to their own separate adventures, Aang with Guru Batik, Katara with the king, Sokka with his father, and Toph with their mother. Day 149, May 1st. As the gang set off, the Earth King welcomes the Kyoshi warriors within his ranks. Little does he know, they're not Kyoshi at all. And Toph, set up for a trap, is finally captured by the Earth Rumble leader and her Sifu. Book 2, The Guru. Day 150, May 2nd. This episode will do a lot of time hopping, but we'll do our best to keep everything in order. To start, we find a healthier Zuko whose fever has been completely broken. Appa, yip yip. Travel on Appa from Bossing Se to Chameleon Bay would likely take four days with rest, putting us at day 154, May 6th. On his way down to see the Guru, Aang drops off Sokka to rendezvous with the rest of the Southern Water Tribe warriors, including his father, Hakoda. Before departing, Aang tells Sokka, See you in a week! Yip yip! Establishing how long he should be away, and when he'll return back to the bay. Back at Ba Sing Se, the Earth King lets it slip to a disguised Azula what his military council is planning on the Day of Black Sun. Whoops! Whoops! Eh? In the war room, the general state, In exactly two months, the army and navy will invade the Fire Nation on the Day of Black Sun. Which is a bit of a discrepancy if we're taking the pseudo-Chinese Gregorian calendar at face value. Remember that the translation of the calendar stated the Day of Black Sun would fall on the first day of the eighth month, not the sixth day of the seventh month, meaning that the military forces should be attacking in three months, not two. Whoops, whoops, eh? Headed back to Aang and Appa, as we've established before, it takes at least a week with rest to go from Ba Sing Se to the Eastern Air Temple, putting us at day 156, May 8th. Aang finally meets with Guru Patik. His first lesson? To drink onion and banana juice. Gross. Meanwhile, somewhere between Ba Sing Se and Gao Ling, Toph is transported away from her friends, though her captors seem to be lost. Night, 156, May 8th. Azula conspires a coup from within Ba Sing Se by way of the Dai Li. Back at the Air Temple, Aang learns about how chakras work, but he discovers that his chakras are all kinds of blocked up. So it's time for a training sequence. Day 157, May 9th. Sokka gets some lessons in tangle mine construction as Fire Nation ships approach. In Ba Sing Se, Iroh opens his first and very own tea shop. At the palace, Azula and her girls set up a trap. At the Eastern Air Temple, Aang continues his training while Toph discovers metal bending for the first time. In the afternoon, Katara discovers that Zuko and Iroh are in Ba Sing Se's upper ring. Uh-oh, that's gonna be some drama. Night 157, May 9th. Back at the Air Temple, Aang struggles with the idea of letting Katara go. And Katara, back at Ba Sing Se, confides in the Kyoshi warriors, but soon finds out they aren't Kyoshi at all. Meanwhile, Aang has his own Empire Strikes Back moment, as he has a vision of a suffering friend, leaving the temple before his training is done. If you leave now, you won't be able to go into the Avatar state at all! And back on the road, Toph escapes her metal cage while Sokka prepares for battle, and Aang sort of teleports. Yeah, teleports. Guru Patik never mentioned that in the training log. Just before Sokka leaves for battle, Aang shows up on Appa. According to the map, at Appa's fastest, it would take two days to get to Chameleon Bay without rest. Yet, Aang makes it back in what seems like a few hours at most. We'll have to let this one go, but it certainly should be noted. The episode ends with Azula finishing off her trap and plan as she pulls one over on Long Fang and invites Iroh and Zuko to the Royal Palace to serve the Earth King their celebrated tea. Book 2, The Crossroads of Destiny. Appa, yip yip. Despite Appa's quick travel time in the previous episode, it should actually take three days with light rest to get from Chameleon Bay to Ba Sing Se, putting us at Day 160, May 12th. Aang, Sokka, and Toph return to Ba Sing Se to save Katara from the clutches of Azula and the Fire Nation. 
Zuko and Iroh arrive at the royal palace only to find out Azula is the one running things. Thankfully, the Dragon of the West still has some heat in him, allowing them to escape Azula's clutches. But Zuko wants to face Azula head on once and for all, which is a big mistake. Captured, Zuko is thrown into the crystal catacombs with Katara. With both their loved ones gone, Iroh and the remaining Team Avatar join forces. Alone, together, Katara and Zuko have a heart-to-heart -heart while Team Avatar splits up, Toph and Sokka on the King with Aang and Iroh looking for Zuko and Katara. Unfortunately, Toph and Sokka get captured, but Iroh and Aang find Zuko and Katara. Aang and Katara go running off in search for their friends, but Azula halts them in their tracks, along with Zuko, who has chosen to side with the Fire Nation. A fight breaks out between the four until finally Aang enters the Avatar state to end things. But that was the wrong decision. While vulnerable in the Avatar state, Azula shocks Aang with lightning straight through the chest. Night 160, May 12th. With Earth King in tow and Aang near dead, Katara uses her Northern Water Tribe's spirit water to revive the boy Avatar. And that's what I call high quality eight tool. <laughs> But the Earth Kingdom has fallen. And that's it. Jesus, that was long. Um, oh, wait. There's more comics. The return of the great comic book detour. Lost Adventures. It's only natural. This comic takes place back in Chameleon Bay. If we had to guess, we'd say the distance between Bossing Se and the bay would take three days with rest, putting us at night 163, May 15th. Sokka and Toph crack jokes about Bosco, the Earth King's pet bear, but it's Bosco that gets the last laugh when he takes over Sokka's tiny tent. Day 164, May 16th. The next day, Sokka teaches Bosco how to be a real wild bear who can fend for himself and live among nature, and not in Sokka's tent. But in the end, the Earth King and Bosco realize they have a lot to learn about the world, so they both strip themselves of their royal garments and go natural, sauntering off into the wild. Godspeed, you two. Godspeed. The Lost Adventures, going home again. Day 165, May 17th. Zuko is conflicted and disgruntled, as usual, and now he's refusing to return to the Fire Nation, so Azula cooks up a plan to set up a date between him and May his old flame. During their date, they run into Jin, Zuko's sort of girlfriend. It's really not clear. After Mei and Jin throw icicles at Zuko's head, the former prince and the governor's daughter share a private moment and a kiss. Day 166, May 18th. The next day, the Fire Nation prepares to return home. Azula thinks her plan has worked, that Zuko wants to return home because of his rekindled relationship with Mei, but it's the sight of his uncle that does him in. Zuko finally agrees to return home. Lost Adventures, The Bridge. Day 167 to Day 185, May 19th to June 9th. The way we determine the length of time within this comic is based on Aang's hair growth. At the beginning of the comic, he's completely bald, like usual, but at the end, he's got a fair amount of hair, it also helps that at the start of Book 3, Katara tells him he was out for a few weeks, so 21 days seems like a nice round number. The entire comic depicts the events that led Team Avatar to acquire a Fire Nation ship, which ends up being a big surprise to Aang when he eventually wakes up in Book 3. And we're done. Seriously this time. So Avatar takes place over the course of 125 days, give or take, bringing our total to 185 days or roughly six months. If you're scratching your head and wondering how the heck did he come up to that conclusion, uh, you should probably go back and watch the rest of the video for my explanations and some of the details that got us to that conclusion. On the next video in this series, we'll be examining book three's timeline and essentially the entire timeline of the TV series, the animated series, the original one, because you know, the live action coming out or if this is way in the future the live action series is already out and done if you enjoyed this video give it a like uh, if you want to be notified for the next video go ahead and subscribe if you want videos early uh, as some people um, in the comments you can see below did get this video early you can join my email list uh, descriptions about that are down below description box all that all that jazz otherwise that's it I'll see you guys on the next one as always peace love and remember be water my friends <laughs>